revisiting the objectives that the court sets to achieve as to see if we have achieved them or not. Now, let's continue to revisit the course objective number one in this video. The first objective of the course is for you to use the new set of textbooks more effectively, efficiently, and comfortably. Have we achieved it? Let's take a closer look. First, you should be able to use the books effectively by now. Effective here means using the books successfully, especially in terms of achieving each lesson's objectives. In order to help you achieve that, the course offers plenty of practice, such as quizzes. Most of the quizzes are in the form of multiple choice questions or gap fields, while several others are matching exercises or other formats. All the same, they aim at reviewing the objectives of each module to make sure you have achieved these objectives of each training module. And as we have learned from the previous video, these modules build up and prepare you to use the new Diangang textbooks effectively. Besides, there are always supplementary resources in each module. They are often videos of real classroom practices. Watching these videos will give you even more experience and develop your skills of teaching English in the classrooms. And experience and skills certainly help you to master different parts of the textbooks. Next, efficient here refers to the ability to use the new Biongang textbooks in a good and thorough way with no waste of time, money or energy. This is where the videos come in handy. Each video lasting from 5 to 10 minutes were meant to summarize the most important points of the module. They are short, but that's why they can underline the essential knowledge and skills you need to use the textbooks. Hopefully, they saved you plenty of time and energy learning. Similarly, the readings provide you with plenty of tips, strategies and classroom procedures which make teaching with the new textbooks easier. In your own class, you can easily refer to these tips, strategies and classroom procedures when you need ideas or know the steps to take. In that way, you may now use the new textbooks efficiently. Finally, there is plenty of practice to improve your confidence in using the new textbooks so that you are now comfortable with them. There are reflection tasks that connect what you learn in the course with what you experience in your classroom. Hopefully, they help you to find that what we learn in here during the course is directly applicable to your teaching contexts. We have also covered plenty of performance tasks where you were asked to perform real-life tasks in your classrooms using the new Diangang textbooks. With the trainer's feedback so far, I hope you can see that you can, and in fact have used the textbooks very well, in your classroom more confidently now. And don't forget that we have forums. By sharing with your friends, classmates, peers, etc. online, you can see how others have addressed similar problems. That hopefully also brings out more confidence in you, especially by motivating you to try out new ideas in your own teaching situations. And that's what we mean by helping you to use the sets of new textbooks more effectively, efficiently and comfortably. Make sure you have completed all tasks mentioned above to achieve this objective. See you in the next, also the last, review video. In this extra part of the video, we will watch a video from you Organ on YouTube. This video gives tips about how to manage large classes. We are watching the video to understand better how to adapt our teaching to suit classes with a large number of students. Therefore, it is related to the modules on adapting our teaching practices to different learners and environments, which we covered in the past few modules. It is also relevant, because large classes are very common, especially in public schools in Vietnam. As you watch the video, 
take notes to answer the following questions. Take some time to study the questions first before we begin. So are you ready? Let's start with the video. Remember to take notes to answer the questions. Module 6. Classroom Management for Large Classes In recent years, the demand for English has increased. Schools around the world have responded by adding more English classes into the curriculum. Class sizes can be quite large and, in some cases, are growing even larger. Classes of 50 to 75 students are not uncommon. Many people in education are asking themselves, how do large classes affect an instructor's ability to teach and a student's ability to learn? And how do large classes affect the quality of education? Teachers may not be able to answer these as research questions, but they can examine pedagogical techniques and classroom management practices that make the best of large classroom situations. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Module Focus, Introduction. In this module, we'll look at classroom management from the perspective of pedagogical planning, classroom learning systems, and student behavior or discipline. Number one, viewing points. Pedagogical planning. Video segment number one. Teachers worldwide share the goal of working to create a caring, supportive environment that supports maximal student learning. We know that each class needs to be well-planned and organized with clearly structured lessons that keep learners motivated and engaged. In addition, we, as teachers, can give diagnostic tests at the beginning in order to discover each student's strengths and needs. We can help students set their own learning goals and develop learning strategies that work well for them. So by step by step, by practice and especially listening, so, and reading it will help a lot. We can think of students as having a range of abilities and as works in progress. We can avoid labeling such as, that student is smart, that one is stupid, that one never listens. We can individualize interactions as much as possible. We can learn student names or use student identifiers such as name cards so students feel important and feel that we know them. We can create a plan that allows us to give individual attention to a particular set of students each day. We can rotate so that over two to three days, each student or student group gets some individual attention. We can work with administrators and fellow teachers to regularly update the curriculum to meet student needs. Okay, now, I want you. And we can encourage student responsibility and independence by allowing them freedom within the established framework to make choices, to help with classroom logistics, and to help each other. I get it at seven Number two, viewing points. Classroom learning systems. Video segment number two. The classroom needs to be physically organized in a way that facilitates the lesson and expected learning procedures and goals. If possible, it should allow for student movement around the class. Another goal to move toward is to establish a calm working environment with clear expectations and routines. 
I want you to move to the language lab to continue listening. Uh, I just look and call them birds. Who's going to answer stars? Yeah. And even when they leave the class uh, to go to the library or to the language lab or to the multimedia, birds will go first. Of course, I choose the nearest to the uh, door so they don't go haphazardly on the stairs. Consistent student training at the beginning of the school year helps set up systems for classroom logistics so that students can move smoothly from one activity to another, shift in and out of group work quickly. Yeah, everybody at your table has a salmon expert. Somebody who read with me today about salmon and who will be able to tell you the information you need to know about salmon. They are going to tell you what class of animal the salmon belongs to. Ready? Heads together. Okay. One, two, three, eyes on me. Red, number three. It's a bony fish. Yeah, there's some fish that... And self-check and peer check student work. Classroom routines need to be clearly established and carefully followed. Everybody else has a pretty good understanding of what I expect and what we're doing. Every day is the same routine. Um, and so, and knowing that, it just makes the day run really smooth. And I'm going to read it and we'll all read it once. Teachers can keep explanations and directions clear and brief. So I'm going to read it. They can set up routines for classroom logistics such as attendance, homework correction, paper distribution and collection, work completed, and so on. They can put the day's agenda on the board at the beginning of class. After that, we will do a small group discussion, pre-reading skills. We will thereafter watch a short video clip. They can create purposeful activities that keep learners on task, and they can have additional self-directed activities available for students who finish early. If you have several large classes, establish consistent routines for all of them. You can use curriculum and lesson plan templates, but keep them general enough so that they can be adjusted for each individual group as needed. Many teachers find it useful to create smaller teaching units within the larger group. When possible, give learners responsibility for choosing and doing individual projects in a group they have chosen. Display student work and projects. And use any available aids or volunteer help effectively. Number three, viewing points, student behavior, discipline. Video segment number three. We, as teachers, know we have authority and know we must use it selectively and wisely. We have an obligation to treat all students fairly and to avoid humiliating them. If we respect them, we know they will respect us. In addition, we, as teachers, can be proactive rather than reactive. We can establish clear rules and expectations and then follow them for all students. We can even let students establish their own agreed-on classroom conduct guides. Consistency is crucial. As far as management goes, uh, it started from day one just teaching them, you know, when you're done with a center, it's time for you to clean up your mess before you go on to another center. And so that's been the rule and they've done really well with following that rule and cleaning up before they go. We can post class rules and behavior expectations on the wall in both the first and second language. We can use reward systems and peer reinforcement so that the whole class works towards common behavioral goals. Okay, and I have super scientist awards for some of the people that I see doing a really good job while we're doing our chants. Okay, people who are solving problems, making good decisions, and showing respect. Okay, I'll go through. We can establish consequences for inappropriate behavior 
and, when needed, apply those consequences in a fair and matter-of-fact manner. To the extent that it seems reasonable, we can postpone individual discipline matters until after class in order to save class time for learning. We can build into lesson plans both purposeful activities and other opportunities for students to get up and move around the classroom. We can try to discover the reason for behavior in cases where there are consistent student discipline problems. We can work with administrators and colleagues to determine the extent to which school-wide behavior models can be put into practice and followed by all. The focus in Module 6 has been on ideas and effective techniques for managing large classes from the standpoint of pedagogical planning, classroom learning systems, and student behavior or discipline. Number four. There is no one recipe for success on this challenging topic. However, with careful planning, consistency, and perhaps a bit of creativity, we can try to bring more of a small town feel and sense of community to our overcrowded classes. See the manual for readings and more information on this and other topics related to classroom management. Well, have you got all your answers? Feel free to go back to the video if you are not ready. If you aren't, let's reflect on the questions I told you earlier. What are the strategies for managing large classes in terms of pedagogical planning? They are having well-planned classes and lessons, giving diagnostic tests at the beginning of the course, help students set their own learning goals and plans, avoid labeling students, individualize differences, such as by learning their names or using name cards, rotate attention among different groups of students, and allow them certain freedom. In terms of classroom learning system, some techniques for managing large classes are Allow for movement if possible A calm and relaxed environment Set up logistics Self-check and peer check Class routines set clearly and followed Clear brief directions Day agenda put up Purposeful activities Self-directed activities for students who finish early flexible lesson plans, individual projects if possible, display their work, and use any volunteer help effectively. Finally, in terms of disciplines, we may use authority selectively and wisely, respect the students, be proactive by setting clear rules and classroom conduct guides, stay consistent with the rules. Post class rules in both languages. Establish consequences of violations and treat them fairly. Discover reasons for bad behaviors. And set up models. So to sum up, I hope the video is useful by giving you more ideas about how to manage large classes in terms of pedagogical planning, learning system, and discipline. See you in the next video.